Uh, good afternoon to those of you who are in Africa. Good uh, morning to those of us who are uh, in the United States. Uh, bon dia, bonjour. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the, the breakout session uh, for the civic engagement track where we're going to discuss the next 10 years, uh, a vision for Yali's future. And this is really an opportunity for us uh, to, to discuss you know, we've, we've had 10 amazing years of the YALI program. Uh, where are we going to be in the next 10 years? How can we take this uh, fantastic program that has been created and, and engage um, both the alumni of this program? You know, more than 24,000 of you have, uh, have gone through either the Mandela Washington Fellowship or one of our regional leadership centers. And we have more than 700,000 people who are a part of the YALI network. Uh, so we have this amazing group of people throughout the continent that are engaged on important issues, in this case, uh, civic engagement issues, uh, but also business and entrepreneurship and public administration. Um, how can we continue to uh, give you guys the tools and, that you need and the networking capabilities that will help you achieve your goals, as well as, uh, uh, you know, expand the pro or, you know, reach uh, additional folks uh, in, in Africa. So um, I'm here today uh, with Haina KK. Uh, I'm going to introduce her in just a minute. She'll give a few remarks. Uh, then I will uh, just give a few very brief remarks. And then we're really going to have that discussion. Um, and then ultimately, we'll rejoin with our counterparts in the business administration track and the public administration track. And uh, we'll have a chance to, uh, for all of us to discuss what we've talked about here and hear from the other groups uh, and hopefully start to build those ideas and, and see what we can do for the next 10 years. So um, with that, I do want, absolutely want to introduce my colleague. This is Haina KK. She is from uh, the Comoros Islands, and she is a 2014 Mandela Washington Fellow. She is the co-founder and president of Imara Comoros, and she was a civic engagement track participant when she, in 2014 as part of the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program. Uh, she's a member of the inaugural Mandela Washington Fellowship cohort in that 2014 group, um, and she participated uh, in the civic leadership track at Delaware University before spending three months in Washington, D.C., where I am based, as an intern with Advocates for Youth. Upon returning to Comoros in 2015, she co-founded I'm a Rad African, or Amara Comoros, an NGO that enables Comorian uh, youth and children to become leaders by providing them with a platform to explore and enhance their skills in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, as we often call that, uh, youth rights and leadership as well, as uh, the arts. In 2019, Imara Comoros put their country on the world's robotics map by participating in the first global challenge in robotics, where they competed against 191 other countries and won the silver medal for courageous achievement. Uh, Heine also works as a professional translator for several international organizations, including the European Asylum Support Office. In 2016, she was selected to represent Comoros at the One Young World Summit in Bangkok as the ambassador and flag bearer, and she addressed COP21 as the Comorian, Comorian delegate speaker. She was sub subsequently awarded the One Young World Bursary to attend the B-Spark Leadership Academy for a one-year fellowship in Spain. Heine is also a certified member of the inaugural Obama Leaders Africa program, and she's currently working as a program and training assistant for Peace Corps Comoros. Heine, over to you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much for such a growing introduction. It is such an honor to be here with you, with everyone and hear from you. So without further ado, I would like to share what my vision for uh, Africa and for YALI in the, ten, in the next 10 years. Um, so what I envision is an Africa that is resilient, but more than that, an Africa that is anti-fragile. I mean by that a continent which is capable to thrive, not despite failures and obstacles, but as a result of them. As an alum of the first cohort of Mandela Washington Fellows, I have witnessed firsthand what programs that build leadership skills have brought throughout the pandemic. From initiatives to deliver maternity health kits to pregnant women, to grassroots communities that built thousands of tippy taps from reused materials across Africa, to my NGO, which created alternative education tools to encourage uneducated parents in their children uh, and to engage them in their children's education, we have demonstrated that Africa is anti-fragile. 
the young leaders who have accomplished this did so because they knew who they were and they knew what they wanted for their countries. But most importantly, they had one trait in common. They benefited from a training that strengthened their personal foundation. In the wake of COVID-19, in a lot of our countries, we have seen mistakes being made in the handling of the pandemic. We have seen leaders resorting to different solutions that were not always appropriate. We've seen false messages being disseminated through social media. And most alarmingly, we've seen our ability as the civil society our ability to intervene in the domains of health, education, climate change, significantly reduced because those in power, despite their best intention, do not have the, the input required to be the leaders they could be. To create a society that thrives in the face of adversity. The challenge does not solely reside in bad leadership and bad intentions. If the civil society has learned one thing from this pandemic, it is that now, more than ever, we need to build anti-fragile structures. And a lot of African NGOs have demonstrated that this is a reality that is attainable. The question now remains as to how we spread and perpetuate this model on the continent. And this is where programs like YALI fit into the vision. The YALI RLC, or the Mandela Washington Fellowship, do not only offer leaders the tools to become effective and resilient in the leadership style. They teach us to be values-led leaders. And we here stand as proof of the impact such powerful learning opportunities can have. The added value of what I, uh, and what I see in the future of YALI are deliberate efforts put into building leaders from the inside out. And this is a big investment. It is a slow process that starts with knowing yourself, then knowing your business, something we all assume we do until we've, we're faced with issues and seek instead of seeking to thrive. My message to Yali for Africa is build the leader's personal foundation through the program dedicate more time to leaders knowing themselves and building themselves before they build their leadership skills. Because at the end of the day, they are the foundation of their leadership. And that's what I see in future generations of YALI Fellows. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Heine. That was fantastic. Uh, Really great opportunity to hear that. I really like um, the way that you describe not just resiliency, but anti-fragile. That's a really interesting concept. And I, I really appreciated hearing um, how you kind of really developed that, that idea. Um, I'll just give some very brief remarks because most importantly, we wanna start hearing from, uh, from all of you who are in this session as well. Um, you know, I am uh, a, a diplomat of the United States government. I have been a foreign service officer for 20 years now. Uh, and I've served all over the world. I've served in the Caribbean, in Europe, uh, and, and uh, twice in Africa. And now I work on African issues from here in Washington. Uh, my office uh, oversees all of our public diplomacy and public affairs uh, engagement, uh, both in Africa and in the United States uh, as, it as it relates to African issues. And so that means that we sort of uh, are the ones who are the, the central focus uh, in coordinating all of our YALI programs. And I must say that the YALI program, I, we have a, a number of very, very good programs that we do with, with public diplomacy, exchange programs like Fulbright. Uh, we have English language programs, but really YALI is uh, in my heart, uh, my absolute favorite. Whenever I've had a challenging situation or a, a tough day uh, when I was uh, in on the continent, I would always try to find an, an opportunity to engage with a YALI uh, alumnus or alumna because that really um, always picked me up, gave me new, um, you know, new hope and new and a, and a, a lifted spirit uh, for whatever challenges uh, I might have to face in that day, uh, and so we really um, 
see YALI as, as a key part of our foreign policy. And so I want to talk a little bit about what our foreign policy goals are and how you as, um, as members of the YALI community play into that. Uh, so we here in the Bureau of African Affairs work to build upon the United States longstanding relationship with the people of Africa. And we do that through five primary priorities. Number one, fostering democratic progress and respect for human rights. Number two, uh, increasing mutually beneficial economic growth, trade, and investment. Number three, uh, advancing peace and stability. Number four, strengthening health security and enhancing environmental sustainability. And number five, and in my opinion, most importantly, engaging Africa's growing youth population as a force for economic and political dynamism. And this really uh, is where you come in, not only in that fifth, in, in, in my opinion, most important element, but really the work that you are doing touches on all of those other four goals as well, particularly in the civic engagement track. The work that you're doing helps us uh, to promote the uh, democratic progress and, and promote respect for human rights. The work that some of you are doing also in the in the health security fields are uh, helping Africa uh, adapt not only to uh, things like COVID-19, but Ebola and other uh, health issues. Um, and also many of you are engaged in the key element of, of uh, enhancing environmental stability as well. Um, one of the other, uh, some of the other cohorts in the other, uh, any other tracks are working, um, you know, in business and entrepreneurship to to build that uh, ec mutually beneficial economic growth. And importantly, our colleagues in the um, the public administration track are helping to uh, create the types of government that are able to in advance peace and stability throughout the region. So you can see how important it is um, that you both as young people and as members of the Yali community, uh, the work that you're doing plays into our goals and what I believe would also be the goals of, of most of the countries of Africa um, as we work together to build a better future. Uh, so that's all I'm going to uh, say at the top here, but what I we would like to do now is to, to start discussing some of your thoughts um, not only on, on the last 10 years of Yali, but most importantly on the vision for Yali's future. And so I see uh, a question here from Cyprian Katongo. Uh, what policies does Yali have for the next 10 years? What would engage effective what, what would engage effective participation of African governments in developing Africa? Not viewing Yali as a way to just use as public display, uh, but adding value. Youth are very important in realizing good governance and adding value in developing Africa. Well, I wholeheartedly agree with your point about youth being critically important um, in in really almost demanding good governance of the, of our governments it's that's the role of a of a civil society uh and of a population is to ensure that they are getting um that the governments that they are they're bringing to power are ruling in ways um that are pr promoting democracy and good governance i think that's absolutely critical and really the civic administration track is one of the key ways um that we try to give the the skills and training uh to those of you who are working in those fields uh, Heine, do you have any thoughts on that question? Oh, you're on mute. There you go. So what I wanted to add was that, um, so part of the question was what is the YALI's um, policy for the next 10 years? And I think we here are informing that. I think uh, I think our voice uh, our voice matters, and we are here to actually inform what the policy would be, what the where the focus should be, and so that is why it's so important for all, all of us to uh, make sure that our voices are heard, since we have the platform. No, I 100% agree. That's a, that's what today really is about, um, because when we developed uh, the Department of State developed Yali ten years ago, uh, you know, it was a new idea, it was a new concept. Uh, and so we came up with those initial ideas, but now that we're 10 years into YALI, uh, we now want to engage our stakeholders, which are all of you, into saying, you know, here are 10 years, what have we done that we think is great, how can we do better, and what should the next 10 years look like? So you're absolutely right, this, that's what this is. This is an opportunity um, to hear from you, to help shape uh, and, and give your thoughts and opinions into that policy. And I see a couple of questions about um, the need for 
strong Yali networks. Um, we totally agree. You know, Yali is um, has three real elements that are part of of the the big Yali program. There's a Mandela Washington Fellowship, obviously, and uh, Heine has. Uh, been one of the first people to to take part in, in in that Mandela Washington Fellowship element. There are the regional leadership centers, and I saw some folks uh, that were um, shouting out uh, regional leadership centers. Those are on on the continent, so those are a way uh, for us to to reach even more uh, African youth on the continent itself. Uh, and then also we have the Yali Network, which is also very important, and in, in it, it provides ways to share information, um, to share training, online training, which particularly given the, the last year of this global pandemic, we've seen how much we can really do online as we've been forced to do so um, because we haven't been able to be in person. And also, uh, so those are uh, those are really kind of the three key elements of, of the YALI program writ large. Um, one question uh, is how can YALI alumni networks be strengthened? That's a great idea. I would certainly welcome your thoughts and I'll turn it over to you in, in a second, Hainan, and what you think. Um, you know, we obviously, one of our, I would say, best partners, um, when I've been working in public affairs sections uh, in, in Africa, our best partners have been the alumni of our programs, and YALI alumni tend to be some of the most dynamic, most enthusiastic. Um, they want to take what they've learned from their programs, and they want to put it to use in their communities. So um, if there are ways that we can uh, even further strengthen both the communication between you and perhaps your public affairs sections, because they can be great sources of resources, uh, as well as um, you know, organizational tools, but also the uh, network that you guys have across the entire continent. I think that's one of the key elements of the YALI program is that it brings together people, not just from your own country or your own community, um, but from across the continent. So you can see how the challenges you have may exist um, in another part of the continent and how you guys can find ways um, to, to share best practices and, and uh, achieve your, your goals, um, your mutual goals together. Haina, do you have any thoughts on, on these uh, comments? Yes, and I like the fact that you said uh, that there are other people who are um, experiencing the same challenges because uh, before I went to Yali, I had this, uh, to the Mandela Washington Fellowship, I had this impression that I was the only one who had these ideas that nobody understood me and all that. But um, so upon returning to my country where I didn't live, so I, I didn't live in my country when I went to the United States for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. But um, after it, I went back to my country. And that same year in 2015, I started uh, my NGO. I co-founded it with, an, uh, with a, another Mandela Washington alum. And this is just uh, every time people ask me, like, what is your biggest takeaway from the, the Mandela Washington Fellowship? I tell them it's it's my co-founder because I found someone who was in my country, who was thinking exactly the things that I was thinking, who had great ideas in, in, in you know, in mind and who wanted to change the country and as much as I wanted to. And so. We harnessed that and we started the NGO together and were later joined by another alum. Uh, so our board, um, our executive board right now consists of four Yali people. So two, three Mandela Washington uh, fellow alum and then two RLC alum. So this is uh, just an example of how maybe, maybe your network is um, scattered all over the country, but you can still work together. You can still build something together. So read them because the, it doesn't end in Washington. That's where it starts. You know, that's where it starts. You have to come and, you know, go to your countries and reach out to those people. No, I think you make an excellent point, uh, Heine. Um, I would say there are kind of two elements to the networks. There's first, as, as Heine just mentioned, the network you have with the other people in your country. And um, there should be somebody in your public affairs section uh, at the embassy in your country that uh, that works to try to help create, you know, to maintain ties with our alumni. But many countries across the continent have uh, alumni networks um, or, or organizations that they've built themselves. Um, I've found that many of our YALI alumni end up um, playing key roles in, in promoting and growing uh, those networks. Um, sometimes they may include 
alumni of all exchange programs to the United States, or they could include Fulbrights, um, people who promote uh, participated in, in things like uh, the YES study program, where they they study for a year in the United States. But um, others uh, may be more focused on on the Yali alumni themselves. And so, some places I've seen everybody together, and some places I've seen actually both. Um, but regardless, whatever exists in your country, I would encourage you to, to be an active participant in that. And if if an alumni um, network that within your country doesn't exist yet, work on creating one. Find your colleagues and create one. And then there's also the broader YALI network, which is across the continent. This is 24,000 strong now and growing every year. And so that's where I was talking a little bit earlier about, you know, how can you share uh, what you've learned trying to address a specific issue in your country with uh, with the, somebody who's working on the same issues, but maybe, you know, halfway across the continent. Uh, and that's an important element as well. And so as the Department of State, we see our alumni and the networks of our alumni is super important. And so we're working to leverage our convening power to create more opportunities for you alumni to connect with each other, both within your countries uh, and around the continent, as well as with US entities. So we're thinking about a lot of ways that we can make that happen and we wanna hear from you, but these could include regional conferences, um, expanded opportunities uh, for grants, uh, or the creation of a networking platform. So maybe a, you know a, our own social media platform. These are all ideas we have, but part of this opportunity today is to hear from you as to what you think would be most effective in, in um, strengthening the network. So let's see what other kind of questions we have. Um, I think John uh, Darung Dut, I was uh, hoping I was answering your question with, uh, with what I just said about how we want to, to continue to build up our, our alumni opportunities. Um, so I, I hear your, I, I see a question or a comment that, that digital engagement is good, but access to data and phones is, is a challenge. Uh, I, I completely hear that and, and know that it, um, the, the cost of data can vary widely depending on where you are on the continent. Um, certainly a challenge that we're all trying to, uh, to overcome. Uh, I hope that if you have American spaces in your countries that you might make use of those once we start coming out of uh, out of this COVID mm -hmm. situation. American spaces uh, are um, joint uh, programs run by the embassies with, with partners in the country and many of them have internet access and internet capabilities. Uh, so they've been closed for some, many of them have been closed because of the pandemic. But as we hope to um, emerge from this, that's one other way that we as the US government can work with partners on the ground to help to try to provide um, better uh, opportunity and access to the internet for this type of digital engagement. Haina, uh, what kind of challenges have you dealt with in digital engagement with both, you know, with, with all of the work that you've done uh, with Imara and, and other organizations? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that challenge resonates a lot, uh, especially as an education NGO. So we have, uh, I work with communities that have no access to, let alone internet. Um, but yes, yeah, so and that's where, what I was talking about anti-fragility, it's, it's that ability because we started not even thinking about how to use uh, how to make use of digital tools that do not exist. We're just like, wow, there was this solution here that we've been in ignoring this whole time. So we started engaging the parents. Uh, my, my biggest challenge was that, was that the students were just sitting idle. And of course, domestic violence uh, increased, which led uh, to a whole nother uh, plethora of, uh, of issues. But what we did was that we, we thought about engaging parents, even uneducated parents, in the education of their kids. And in order to do that, we would issue weekly, uh, weekly books. They were five pages. And um, even if the parent wasn't educated, they could, they could still help their students, which is something that was so empowering to them because it was the first time that they got engaged with, uh, with their kids' education. And what we did basically was ask questions, uh, questions related to things, historical facts, cultural things that you do not learn at school. But by doing so, the student who then has to everything has to ask their parents, like what happened in, in 1980? Uh, what, who is this president? Because we do not learn those things at school. How do you make this thing? And then they have to read, they have to write it down in French because that's the language of education here. 
which means that they keep engaging with education and it's probably not the same thing as going to school on a regular basis but it was it helped uh it helped increase their level of reading and writing a lot so the majority of our kids went back to school uh, being like reading more quickly, writing more quickly than the others because they had to do that on a weekly basis. No, I think that's uh, that's really great. Um, the importance that people in, in Africa put on education is really fantastic and engaging the parents as a way to, um, to ensure that they are also a, a stakeholder and a partner in their children's education is uh, is a fantastic way to uh, to really bring that holistic sense to to reaching your audiences. Uh, I saw a really interesting comment um, about one way to strengthen alumni with, is is concepts called train the trainer, where um, all of you as Yali alumni have received training. Um, there may be even more resources that can be offered to you, but what's really great is that um, you have that expertise, you have that information, and you have that enthusiasm and initiative. Um, we can find more ways to give you the resources that you need to share that information with with more people, and that's like an amplification um, element, right? You've got you've gone uh, on the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program, or you've gone to a regional leadership center. You've gotten all this information, uh, and so um, how can you? How can we help empower you to share that to spread that to even more people? You know, I see Yali as an investment in. Uh, Africa's greatest natural resource, which is its people. And so by investing in you, you're able to reach even more uh, folks in your communities, uh, in your countries. And so I think that's a, a, an absolutely fantastic uh, comment. Um, again, here and I would say, I, yep, please, Haina. Sorry, Matt, may I just add to that? I wanted to say that uh, oftentimes it's really, uh, we think that we don't have, uh, we don't have the power, we don't have anybody to reach out to. But if you think about training of trainers, uh, those are things that uh, the, the, United, uh, the United States Embassy in your country will definitely support. So reach out to them. Tell them that this is, uh, you know, create your budget, come up with a great project and submit it. They create a lot of opportunities to do that. Of course, there are exceptions, but they, they, the opportunities are there. And when, for example, during the pandemic, when there are special circumstances, they, they become even more receptive to it. So just, I just want to reiterate that uh, there are people we can reach out to and we should reach out. Haina, you said better what I was about to say. You said it much better, though. That's exactly right. Um, most of our embassies have resources that we, um, we have to to empower our alumni to share their information. And so be in touch with your alumni coordinator at the embassy, see what opportunities exist. Um, it's not, you know, there's there's usually a, a cycle or a timeline for those resources to be available, um, but, you know, make sure that you're on any sort of email lists or that you're getting the information so that if you have a great idea, if you see an opportunity for you to share what you learned, um, then you can take advantage of the of the resources that the embassy may have available. I think that's uh, fantastic. Thank you for making my point for me. Um, let's see, I see a comment. Young people are very engaged. We have the will to help to positively change the world around us. However, the main problem we face is the lack of support, the lack of people to give the best advice and often the right information to do the best. What solutions does Yali bring to this level? Well, uh, I would hope that um, some of the training you've received uh, as, as part of the YALI program, whether it's the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program, the RLCs, or the YALI Network, are giving you um, the, the information that you need uh, to, to, part, to change the world around you. Um, here also, I think this is a situation where that network can be very important because you may not know how to address a, a challenge, but maybe one of your colleagues in another part of Africa has found a way and you can learn from each other through that um, exchange and through that that community and network. Haina, do you have any thoughts on, on that? Um, yes, it's basically what you said. I think the comment was in French. I'm going to try and respond in French. Yes, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, en, ce qui concerne, en ce qui concerne le, le, le manque d'information qu'on a, par exemple, ou bien le manque de soutien, je crois que c'est... Uh, c'est vraiment dans notre tête, on se dit que, que voilà, il n'y a personne qui nous soutient, mais euh, il faut toujours, toujours se rappeler que quelque part dans le pays, tu, vous ne pouvez jamais être le seul personne, la seule personne dans un pays, dans une région, dans un village qui, euh, qui, qui veut changer les choses. 
Donc, il faut toujours se rappeler. Des fois, c'est vraiment euh, difficile de, de repérer ces, ces, ces personnes-là. Mais c'est pour ça que, par exemple, faire partie de, de, votre, de votre groupe de alumni est très important parce que c'est à travers ces groupes que vous, que, que vous trouverez quelqu'un qui, qui a peut-être les mêmes idées. Et euh, c'est à travers, même en ligne, par exemple, euh, j'ai parfois eu des problèmes moi-même où je ne pouvais vraiment pas trouver le, les ressources dont j'avais besoin sur place. Mais j'ai quand, euh, quand même demandé aux autres, est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui connaît quelqu'un Parce qu'il y a toujours, ça existe toujours quelque part. Et là, je peux vous dire que même maintenant, je suis en contact avec des gens que je n'ai jamais encore euh, jamais rencontrés, qui sont quelque part en Éthiopie. Euh, mais, mais je compte vraiment beaucoup sur eux, sur leur soutien, sur leurs conseils. Et ça commence toujours par là. Donc, euh, voilà, je, je, je veux juste dire, il ne faut pas avoir peur de faire le premier pas. Thank you. I think that uh, it's an excellent point, Heine. Um, so hopefully for our French uh, audience, you, were, you uh, got all that information. For those of you who might not speak French, she was just basically highlighting the same concept that the, the alumni network is a great way to share um, problems and share solutions. Uh, she talked about, you know, finding, um, you know, communicating with, with a, a colleague in Ethiopia to help uh, attack some of those challenges. And I think that's a, that's a great point. Uh, I see another uh, point here about um, getting outside of the capitals. Um, I think uh, that is an excellent point. Um, you know, embassies are, are typically based in the capital cities. Um, we have a few consulates outside of the capitals uh, in Africa, um, but uh, it's really important for us as, um, as diplomats um, to make sure that we are um, engaging with the people of, of, our, of a country throughout the entire country, not just in the capital city. And so sometimes there can be challenges um, because of security situations, Uh, obviously, the last year has been a great challenge. We haven't, as diplomats, we have not been able to get um, to meet people in person to travel much because of COVID-19. Um, but as we emerge from this pandemic, I think it is more important than ever that we are we are reaching audiences uh, throughout the entire country, uh, and that we are um, engaging in programs and projects not just in the capitals but throughout the countries as well. This is another place where I would uh, another opportunity I'll use to to pitch. Um, our American spaces, because many of these exist outside of the capitals. And what we try to do is do programming through those American spaces um, that may be in other parts of the country. Um, we often will bring speakers there uh, or visit ourselves to engage with, uh, with local populations. Um, but that's an excellent point that we need to not look just at the capitals, but in, in all of the regions as well. Heine, did you have any thoughts on that? No, I completely agree with what you said. Um... And with uh, with the idea that these things, these trainings should happen outside the capital. Uh, I think the villages and just communities and NGOs, I think it would be actually really innovative if we were looking into having one of the grassroots NGOs host these events. Um, you know, having, uh, having them kind of receive the others, and this would be, this would be really empowering for them, would play a major role in their Um, what what is the word I'm looking for? Like marketing and everything, marketing their uh, their NGOs or their community based organizations. So it is it is a great idea, and I 100% uh, support it. Uh, we have a, a comment that um, at getting visas uh, is a challenge um, for youth as well. I I completely understand that as as a problem, particularly um, you know because of COVID 19 we have not been issuing many visas uh, recently. Um, you know this is something I hope will improve as the global health environment improves. Um, but it, that is certainly one of the challenges um, that we know exists. This is one of the reasons that we created uh, um, both the regional leadership centers so that we would have. Um, places within Africa that wouldn't necessarily require a U.S. visa to, to get some of the same important training um, as part of YALI. And this is also why we have the, the YALI network, um, we, so that we can reach out digitally to people and that they don't necessarily have to travel to benefit from the programs that those offer. Uh, Heine, do you see any comments or questions uh, that you'd like to, to make any points on? Um. Mm, not yet. I see one that I, I think a, a comment that was really interesting, and I do want to hear from folks. If you could give Yali a tagline or motto for the next 10 years, what would it be? Oh, that is a really great question. Heine, do you have any ideas? 
Um, so, huh, that's a very good question. <laughs> Let me think. I see consolidating the success gained through YALI alumni is one. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. Maybe like tomorrow's leaders today. Well, I'm going to keep yes. thinking of that one while I, I look for another question to pose. Me too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a really that's a really great comment. Um, I like that a lot. It's going to have me thinking all day. I see a question about you know new members to the Yali network that haven't had the opportunities to uh, to be trained or supported. Um, how can they access sponsorship from the embassies? Uh, so, a couple of things. First, you know, as part of the Yali community, you do have some resources through the network, so please take advantage of those. Um, and you know, be in touch with your um, with your your embassies. You don't necessarily have to be physically in touch with them, or but um, most of them have Facebook pages or uh, Twitter feeds or other social media where they are constantly. Um, you know, when opportunities exist, uh, both for exchange programs like Yali uh, or for other programs that they may have, they will advertise those because they want to recruit as many candidates as possible for those programs. So definitely make sure that you are following your embassy's um, social media feeds. I think that's a good way to get information. Um, many of them may also have uh, an email distribution list. So you can you can contact them and say, I would like to be put on your email distribution list for training opportunities, for exchange program opportunities. Uh, and so that when those opportunities um, ar arise, uh, you're well placed to uh, apply for those programs. Mm -hmm. And maybe at the risk of being repetitive, again, reach out to your Yali, uh, either Yali or all the other all the other uh, alumni networks in your country, because sometimes uh, sometimes you're doing amazing things out there, but nobody sees you, nobody knows you're doing it. So if you're not putting yourself forward, and I am one to talk because I'm really shy, <laughs> so I don't always do that, but I try. So it's. Um, it's really important because that's how you come to know about existing opportunities. Uh, for me, for example, as a member of the very first cohort, that's a program that did not exist. So I didn't like nobody in my um, in my immediate surrounding would know about it. But it was a friend of a friend who talked to a friend <laughs> who reached out to me and asked and told me, hey, there's this big opportunity. And I was like, no, I don't even, I didn't, back then, didn't even have a Facebook account, didn't have like all those accounts, but it was through a friend who was associated with uh, with a cohort, a Fulbright cohort, uh, alumni network in, in her country. So you never know. And right now I know the, the Obama leaders, for example, there are, there's a system whereby you can nominate people whom you know. Uh, so your alumni network is, the way to go. Always think about them first. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic point, Heine. Um, networks in general, um, but Yali, your alumni network is an important one. The Yali network uh, is another. Your informal networks, your friends and friends of friends, uh, and social media networks. These are all ways that we can find out about these kind of opportunities. So that's a, a fantastic point. Um, I see another suggestion uh, for our motto, expanding the Yali networking oh. to all the nooks and crannies in African states. I like that concept to make sure that we are truly reaching um, everybody uh, on the continent. One of the, the, the goals of the Biden-Harris administration is to make sure that, that we are reaching um, historically underrepresented groups in the United States and overseas. And I think uh, making sure that we are getting outside of those capital cities, that we're getting to all parts of a given country is a great way to make sure that we are uh, reaching traditionally underrepresented groups as well as those who may have easier access uh, to to the embassy and to some of our resources. So I like that. Uh, I like that motto a lot. Uh, 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 Heine, do you, there's one in French. Your pronunciation is going to be a lot better than mine that maybe you can you can read. Yes, it says ensemble nous pouvons le faire and I agree. Oui, on peut. <laughs> yes, together we can do it. Together we can do it. That's that's great. Um, I see another question. Democracy is facing challenges everywhere. How can African youth and U.S. youth work together on these issues? And how can democracy be shared uh, as a global value through YALI? Boy, I can't agree more with the, the, that idea that democracy is facing challenges everywhere. Um, you know, we've seen it in 
um, you know, in, in undemocratic uh, seizings of power in parts of the world. We saw it on, on January 6th in the United States, uh, democracy under attack uh, on, on the U.S. Capitol. And so, um, you know, I think it's more important now than ever that, um, that young people across the world um, work together to ensure that, that, that we are getting governments that are respectful of, of we the people. Uh, and so I'm open to ideas on how we can um, can work together to make that work. I think the networks are one way to do it. Heine, do you have any ideas on how um, the global community can come together to promote democracy? Um, yes, I think I think it's also through dialogue because I think if we're being honest, I feel like nobody really got to a point where they're like, well, we figured out democracy. And this reminds me of a sentence that one of my uh, one of my teachers um, in leadership told me, and that was that really resonated with me. He told us that we're not here. I'm not here teaching you because I know better. I'm here teaching you because I know different. And so that's all we can do. It's talk about how different our perception is. We can we get a chance to see like what is the middle ground. Because if I take my different and you're different and somebody else is different, we can come with something. We can come up with something that works for, you know, not all of us, but works for some of us. But if we just say that this is this is not working, uh, or your democracy model is not, it's 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 not mine different, and I don't understand it, and mine is better. Uh, that's just not the right way to go. So just. Remind, you know, reminding yourselves that it's all about knowing different and learning different and seeing what you can do with different. Wow, honey, that's a really great line. I, I don't know better, I know different. And it's it's from those differences that we can um, take take ideas that might, you know, be relevant to us. I think that's an, a fantastic point. Um, we've been hearing from you about ways that you like to uh, be engaged by the embassy, whether it's social media, um, uh, emails, and I, I'm seeing that emails and WhatsApp seem to be most popular so far. Um, that's great information for us to have. Um, that allows us to, to to tell our embassies across the continent, you know, what um, what's going to be most useful for them to reach out. Um, in order for them to email and WhatsApp you, they're going to need your contact information. So make sure that you, if you're interested in, in staying on top of what embassies have to offer, that you're providing them your email address or uh, the best number or the best way to reach you on WhatsApp um, as well. So that's great. Hannah, do you see anything that's uh, that's jumping out to you um, on our comments or questions? Uh, so I see uh, Olu Segun, I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, who says that Yali uh, in Nigeria doesn't give room for its members to meet the government at the table um and engage our leaders regarding policies and governance issues there were times our lawmakers reach out to us to participate in a public hearing for a particular bill but we are told it is uh, it is not a yali policy why does and how better can we engage our government productively as you as yali members in nigeria using yali as as a body um I think part of the answer is uh, is is in the question. Like you have you have this network, and yes, you have that one thing. You have that community in common, but you also have a goal, which is uh, which is to make your your voice uh, heard by the government. And this is, I think, uh, a challenge across the continent. Uh, we have we face the same challenge, uh, and sometimes for uh, different people, it means different things. But it's it, it's about you. It's about it's about you. That group of people sitting together and deciding to do something. Maybe you won't get the, the result that you want immediately. Maybe uh, maybe the government won't listen to you right away. But if you make enough, if you make enough noise, and not just noise, you know, not just noise in order to make noise. But if if you have a good plan, if you if you stick with it. You start you start small and little and little by little you build uh, you build the movement. I think um, yeah I think I think this is a very common challenge uh, across a lot of African countries, one that I can definitely identify with. But what we have done and what we can do at this stage is just build build structures that protect us but also allow us to voice our opinions because it is important that at the end of the day we are protected.
that we take care of ourselves and that we take care of everyone that's involved when we're trying to make noise. Hi, I think that's a, an excellent point. Um, and I think it is it's super important for the voices of of young African leaders to be heard by uh, the current African leaders, many of whom are not so young. Uh, and so what I will say, and, and this is kind of touching on what Heiner raised, is that you um, you have strength in numbers, and that's where the Yali network, your alumni network, can can come to play. Um, it, you know, think about other alumni from some of the, uh, if you have an alumni network in your country that includes other programs as well, um, you know, the more people you have, the louder voice you can uh, bring to the table. Um, so I would say engage your network. Um, you know, 20, Yali alumni are 24,000 strong and growing every year. So as as the network uh, and the alumni network grows, you you have more and, and louder voices. Uh, and if you're speaking with with one voice, I, I think you have the opportunity to um, to really make yourself heard to to leadership. Your your voters, right? And, and most politicians are elected, and they want to be reelected again. And so that's where, when you have strength in numbers, um, you may have the clout to be able to ensure that that leadership is listening to what you have to say. And I think another thing that I wanted to add is that the beauty of all of this is that we're not all doing the same thing. We're not all uh, education specialists. Some of us in the YALI, uh, in the YALI program uh, do civic engagement. So they are close to the government. And we should make sure we know who those people are. We should make sure that when they are running for something, we are there for them, supporting them, making sure that uh, maybe our collective voice is heard through them. Uh, I, I have met um, personally a lot of um, Mandela Washington fellows who are who work in the government, who are ministers, who are, and I think those are also very good resources to have and to acknowledge, and uh, and they they will be open to listening to you and to finding way to go. That is a fantastic point, Heine. You know, one of our tracks uh, is uh, public administration, and so the the hope is is that people who benefit from the YALI programs in public administration, as well as the other fields, um, will will be positive uh, uh, forces for change within government structures. And that's really, you know, sort of the way that that YALI was designed to really touch on the public sphere, the private sphere, and then civil society. And as civic engagement um, participants, you represent that civil society element. Our business and entrepreneurship folks represent that public or the, the private sector and a public administration, that, that public sector as well. The three key elements of a, of a good functioning society, um, particularly as YALI alumni continue to do fantastic things, to rise in their own careers. You may have allies that are directly within the government that are part of the YALI program. And yeah. one of the things that I think is great about YALI is that um, YALI alumni sort of speak the same language in a sense, right? You've all had training that is very similar um, and you've, you're you're using that training to address these challenges. So as you have allies that are in the, in the, the business sector or in uh, government who are YALI alumni, those are really key resources as well to affecting change. Uh, speaking of the importance of civil society, I see um, uh, a, a comment from someone about closing civic space is a challenge globally. How can YALI support members in this in the civil, civil engagement track to adjust to these challenges? Uh, I think that is, um, you know, as we talk about some of the democratic challenges worldwide, you know, the way that democracies consolidate, or the, the way that governments who don't want to be democratic consolidate power is they try to, to, to close that space for civil society. And that's why civil society and, and folks who are engaged in civic engagement play such a crucial role uh, in, in democracies. Heine, do you have any thoughts on, on how YALI can support members in civic engagement track to fight back against the closing um, civic space? Um, not right away, okay. <laughs> but that's a very good question. I'm thinking about it. That's no, a very I think, great question, though. I agree. I think it is a, it's a very important question. Obviously, it's going to, um, uh, the, the specific situation on the ground in your country and your community is going to play a, a large role in how to address that challenge. Um, but know that you have uh, allies, uh, you know, in the United States uh, embassies um, and amongst your other YALI alumni as well. Uh, and other civil society members. Um, you know, when civil society, uh, when one organization is is um, shut down or targeted, uh, that that exposes risks to everybody. So working within 
um, you know, as a, as a cohesive unit of civil society, even if it's not your specific area of focus can be important as well as you seek to address those challenges. Let's see what other comments we have. Uh, Heine, I see another one in French that I will allow your um, superior pronunciation to... Uh... <laughs> Don't call it that. <laughs> so, la responsabilité ressemble à penser aux autres en quelques mots. Uh, et je crois que ce que... Enfin, ce que j'ai compris du message, c'est ça, c'est que pour être... Afin d'être responsable, il faut penser aux autres. Et, uh, et je suis entièrement d'accord avec ce que vous dites, parce que parce que c'est ça, parce qu'on a souvent tendance à oublier, par exemple, à, à oublier les autres quand on, est, quand on est dans le leadership. Et ce n'est pas, pas nécessairement, ça ne vient pas nécessairement euh, d'un manque d'intérêt ou quoi que ce soit, c'est que des fois, tu vois juste ce qui est euh, devant toi et donc tu protèges ce que tu vois. Mais, tu, mais, mais tu, euh, ce n'est pas que tu ignores, mais des fois, tu oublies ce qui se passe derrière toi. Et donc, c'est notre responsabilité à tous en tant que, en tant que Yali, euh, Yali Fellows, de, de, de penser aux autres. Et je crois que c'était en réponse au motto, motto and for, for the Yali, for the Yali in the next 10 years. Et euh, je suis entièrement d'accord. Je crois que c'est un grand, c'est un bon mot d'ordre. Ah, oui, je suis d'accord. Uh, just to kind of recap that in English, um, she said it was, you know, the, the, the point was it's a responsibility to think about others. Uh, and particularly as you who are young African leaders, um, it's really important that as you take on uh, increasing uh, roles of importance and as you um, gain uh, greater responsibilities, it's important not to forget about other people um, uh, and to, to make sure that you're being inclusive in, in the ways that you're trying to improve your communities. And I think that's an excellent point. Um, so there's another question here that says, in one word, what does Yali mean to you? Another um, great question. Another great question. Um, I think uh, for me, and it's of course very personal, Yali meant for me meant validation because mm. I was just crawling in that little space and thinking that I'm not going to get anywhere. Nobody wants to do this in my country is completely corrupt and everything and all of a sudden there was this opportunity that tells me no you are valid what you're dreaming of it's valid what you want to do is valid so for me yali means validation wow that's that's fantastic uh, and i see some really great other ones empowerment wow that's that's uh, uh, fantastic nice. as well opportunity um mm -hmm. you know for me i think about future um Although, you know, I say future, but, you know, Yali alumni are, are the present too, right? You guys, it's what you guys are doing now um, that, that's also important. These are all great. I love this one. Hope for, Af for Africa by Africans. Good. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's great. Those are all fantastic. Collaboration, nice. Haida, let me ask you a question. Um, you know, what do you think is, is going to be most important for Africa, um, you know, in the next 10, 20 years? And uh, how does Yali fit into that? Mm -hmm. um, I think, like I said at the very beginning, it is, it will be important that, uh, that we build the, uh, that the Yali program build this component of knowing yourself as a person. Because when we come to Yali, we are, or we feel the pressure to, to kind of have a story and tell your story and you immediately identify yourself with that story. But um, I don't think for any like uh, amount of time do we, like nobody thinks about who you are then uh, if, if it's not, who, who are you without your story? You know what I mean? And it's only when you have built yourself enough, you know who you are, you know what your objectives are, you know your why, you know why you're here, you know this is what I'm afraid of, these are my insecurities, these are, and this is how I handle it, this is my reaction to, to, to being scared, this is my reaction to being this. When you have mastered that, then it, it becomes easier to deal with others. And uh, what, where I see, I see Yali in 10 years, 
or maybe I see the Yali fellows in 10 years having mastered that more than anything else, because um, the tools to become a great leaders are not universal. Everybody has their leadership styles. And that's why it's so important that people know themselves, that people acknowledge what their fears, what their wildest dreams are, or like, and also learn to not be afraid of those wild dreams that they have. So what I see in the cohort that follows me is a cohort that gets out of the training, not just with the, uh, not just with the leadership tools, but with just that place, being in that place where they are in control of themselves first. And so now they are more able to, to think very, uh, very critically and very efficiently about what they want for their NGOs, what they want for their civil, uh, for their for the civil society, for their countries, at uh, at large, and that that is a very big and dear dream of mine. That this anti fragility and also knowing yourself portion be a part of the training. That's fantastic. We're going to be wrapping up here shortly. I will say um, we want to continue to hear from you. This is the beginning of the conversation. This isn't the end. Um, other ideas that we as a government have. Um, we want to make sure that we're expanding the YALI network uh, membership and capabilities through the online campaigns. We've obviously discussed some of the challenges that those pose. Um, I'm hoping we can, you can help us find solutions as well. And um, we also want to strengthen and expand the regional leadership centers. Um, this is a way for us to, to be able to expand the YALI training to even more Africans. Uh, so we're looking for ways to, to build um, greater capacity on, among the RLCs to have even more folks who are able to, to benefit from those programs. Um, Heine, do you have any closing thoughts before we uh, get ready to head back to the plenary? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to thank everyone. I think the ideas, the questions that were raised here were amazing. So I want to, to thank every single person here for contributing. And I really liked your ideas. And I, I feel like I'm going to spend tonight thinking about a lot of the questions you asked. I don't know about you, Matt. Oh, absolutely. I Yeah, the rest of the day and probably, uh, you know, in my dreams tonight as well. I, at some point, I will come up with that perfect motto. But I haven't I haven't found one that's better than any of yours yet. All right, folks, well, we're going to have a 10 minute break and then we're going to all rejoin uh, back into uh, the plenary. Um, I will make one last. I see one last uh, thing. Yali means formidable force. And I totally agree with that. Um, I think that's a great way to wrap this part of our conversation. Look forward to seeing you guys in 10 minutes back at the plenary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heine. Thank you.